But Lord, we find in Luke 15, church, we all are aware of the story and familiar with it. We've got the prodigal son, church, that um, at one time he was living with his father and living well off and all. And um, he decided one day that he wanted his portion. Uh, he wanted to go out and live on his own. Uh, you know, and most young kids are like that. It ain't long before um, we don't want to do things mom's way. And uh, we don't want to get home when dad tells us to. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you, there's a few folks that will spoil their youngins. And uh, they'll let them live by their own rules uh, and let them live up under their own rules. Uh, but I'm going to tell you tonight, uh, my daddy and uh, my mama, when I decided I was going to live by my rules, uh, I had to start paying the bills. Uh, I had to start living somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to tell you, saints, uh, this young man was no doubt, uh, no different, and his daddy done told him, uh, yeah, well, you can take what you got uh, and go away, but the doors were always going to be open. Uh, but when he came back, uh, he had to come back and realize uh, that he was going to do things his way. We got folks and we know the story. We know the moral behind the story. Uh, there's been plenty that have walked out on him. Uh, there have been plenty who have turned their backs on him. Uh, and like the prodigal son, uh, they found herself down in the hog trough. Uh, they found herself down in the lowest of lows. Uh, how many of you have been there tonight, church? Uh, I'm going to tell you at one time, uh, I was well off. Uh, had all the toys I wanted. Uh, had a few homes that I wanted. That old boy walked away from his father and walked away from his mother and everything that he ever known. Uh, walked out from under that roof. Uh, he found himself out there living it up. Uh, it wasn't long before everything was spent. Uh, when I think about everything being spent, uh, I'm thinking about that joy being gone. Uh, I think about that joy being wasted. Amen. I'm going to tell you, church, you can't truly find true joy until you find it in Christ. Without Christ, there is no true joy. I'm going to tell you, church, regardless of what I went through, regardless of what I've been through, there wasn't one time I couldn't raise back and raise my arm and say, I know it's going to be all right. It's in his hands. I ain't got no worry. But let me tell you, church, when you walk away from mom and daddy, that security goes. Well, as long as you're up under that roof, you know my Mama's going to make a way whether daddy wants her to or not. Come on. Woo. I don't preach on that too much. But boy, that boy knows what he can't talk mama into. Can't talk daddy into sometimes. Mama, she'll work it out. But you let him walk out from that house. Everything changes. Finally, he decided, you know what? Even the, even the yard man's got it better than I do back in my daddy's house. Even that old boy that answers the door eats good. I'm out here eating old corn cobs and, you know, I'm eating beans mixed in with tomatoes and mashed potatoes and just whatever else they're slopping the hogs with. And I'm eating on old chicken legs that somebody else has chewed up on. I'm trying to live on somebody else's joy and finally, he decided to turn around and go on back home. Amen. I was that boy one day. Go with me to verse 20. That's where I'm going to start. Woo. There's a lot of us tonight, church, that are still hanging on to that old guilt. Amen. I want to tell you, it took me a long time to get back behind this pulpit. I walked away from God for 13 years. I had been a pastor, I'd been an associate pastor, I'd been evangelist, some leading groups, played bass, and just, man, served God in every capacity. Whatever I wanted to do, God just opened up the door and blessed me in that area. I, did, I didn't have no reason to walk away from him. I thought I did, but when I look back on things now, it wasn't that bad. But I was one of those that thought it was a whole lot better out there than what it was in here, and I learned the hard way, church. 
But whenever I came back to the Lord, there was a guilt that kept me behind this, kept me from behind this pulpit. I believe there's a guilt today that's keeping the church from receiving what God has for it. Amen. I believe we're allowing that enemy to walk right up in here and sit in these pews. What is the day, Sister Scarlett? And tell us, you remember what you used to? You ain't got no right to be praying like that. You ain't got no right. God don't owe you a thing. And you know maybe he don't, but he desires to give good gifts to his own. Amen. Yes, he does. Verse 20. So he got up and went to his father. Yeah. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And was filled with compassion. Let me tell you, church, I remember the night that I got saved. Uh, I remember the moment, but I remember weeks that led up to it, if you would. Uh, I remember when my mind started turning back towards the altar. I remember when my heart started turning back towards the church. Uh, I remember hearing those folks sing those songs of old. Uh, I remember when it used to not bother me. But all of a sudden, I remember those old days that I'd be up in that choir, uh, singing under the anointing and shouting with the saints. Uh, I remember, church. When I had that joy, regardless of what was going on, uh, weeks before I got saved, church, uh, God seen me. He seen me coming back. Uh, it was then that he didn't just sit there and wait. Uh, he went to me from afar off. Uh, he kept drawing me. He kept pulling me. No doubt in my mind, uh, it was because my old mama was back home uh, praying God save me whatever it takes. Uh, Lord, you promised it to me. Uh, let me tell you tonight, church, uh, if you got one out there that's lost, uh, if you got one out there living like the devil, uh, don't think that he's sleeping good. 